We're going to start the hour with this. Breaking news in the fight against the coronavirus. Moderna says it's asking the FDA today for emergency use authorization for its vaccine. The U.S. now has had more than 13 million reported cases of the virus. More than 266,000 people have already died. And at least 4.2 million of those cases have been diagnosed in November. And that's double the, November, the number rather from last month. So COVID-related hospitalizations are also at their highest point ever. That's nearly 100,000 people are hospitalized today. Officials warn it could soon get even worse with what they're calling a surge upon a surge after Thanksgiving. Here's White House Task Force member Dr. Deborah Burks. We're entering this post Thanksgiving surge with three, four, and 10 times as much disease across the country. And so that's what worries us the most. In New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio announced some schools there will be reopening. He closed schools earlier this month due to rising case numbers. And we're joined now by Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. Secretary Azar, good to be with you this morning. Thank you for joining us. We've got good news and bad news on the coronavirus. The bad news is we're losing about a person a minute to this disease. The good news is there's help on the way. So I want to start there. The Moderna vaccine emergency use application went in today. Pfizer has already put theirs in. How soon, what day of the month of December could we see an actual shot going into somebody's arm in this country? So, Tony, as you mentioned, a week ago, Pfizer submitted their application for emergency authorization, and then Moderna today is going to be submitting. With Pfizer, we at the FDA announced an advisory committee for December the 10th, and if everything is on track, everything proves out what, uh, what it appears to be, we could be looking at approval within days after that. Moderna is basically one week behind that. And General Perna has said from Operation Warp Speed that we'll ship within 24 hours of FDA authorization. So uh, we could be seeing both of these vaccines out uh, and getting uh, into people's arms uh, before Christmas. So let's talk about who's going to get it. Talk to me about the priority. Who gets it first? Who gets it second? And so on. So we are still running a very public process to seek the best scientific uh, expert opinion here. So we have at the CDC something called the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, and they have been meeting with us to give us advice on whom, based on the data that we've got on these vaccines and the state of the case, the epidemiology around the country, should we vaccinate first? That's ongoing still. Uh, I hope this week we'll get greater clarity from them in terms of their recommendations and our CDC director's views. But but be thinking people in nursing homes, the most vulnerable. Be thinking healthcare workers who are on the front lines of most interacting with suspected COVID cases as the first tranches of people that will try to get vaccinated. Now, the, the federal government will ship to the states, and then you've said governors will have ultimate authority about who gets the vaccine first. If you see at the federal level certain states where people are jumping the line either because they have money or they have connections, is there something that's going to happen to stop that? Well, again, uh, we're not going to be shipping vaccine to the states. I do want to be clear about that. We're shipping it through the normal vaccine distribution system. Our governors are really like air traffic controllers. They're going to tell us which hospital, which pharmacies, where they would like it to go. And they will be determining which groups to be prioritized. I would hope that the science and the evidence will be clear enough that our governors will follow the recommendations that we will make to them. And we'll certainly call out any, any uh, inequities or injustices that we see in approach. Uh, uh, and we'll assess all of our options as we go. But I've got great right. confidence. I'll be talking to all the nation's governors this afternoon with the vice president. I've, I've got a lot of confidence in our governors to do the right thing here. All right, calling it out in inequities. Let's talk about the messaging. Uh, you know, about half the population has said, according to polls, that they may not take this vaccine. They're worried. What is our national strategy for educating the public about the safety of the vaccine and getting people to actually take this thing? Yep, so we've got a very large public affairs campaign in the works. I hope that we'll be on radio this week and then uh, getting on TV soon thereafter to help educate people about these, these vaccines. You know, Tony, one interesting thing, we've actually had to go back to the, to, as we call it, the, the whiteboarding on, the, on, on these campaigns because the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are so highly effective in these clinical trials. Uh, we've actually had to make some edits to our campaign materials to, to take account of that. Uh, and then the most important thing 
thing we're doing is we're keeping politics out of the process and we're making sure that everything is done through those independent checks in the system that you and I've talked about so often. Yeah. Can you tell us more about these campaigns? Because they are so critical. I know you think that. I, I know that the Biden team thinks that. I, I would certainly agree. Uh, what's going to be in these campaigns and are they targeted in particular to populations, I'm thinking black and brown populations, more vulnerable populations, who are particularly skeptical about something coming through a federal process? Uh, yeah, th th there is a targeting there because, as you know, there's a very sad and sorry history in connection with, uh, with some aspects of clinical trial research that have happened in the past. That's why we've been so focused, so very focused, to ensure significant minority community enrollment in these clinical trials. And the latest Moderna data out today from the full clinical trial uh, demonstrated, I think, 30 percent of those in the trials were from uh, underserved communities, especially our African-American and our Latinx communities. So we have a very robust population that participated in the studies. And I just want to say, as secretary, thank you to everybody who's participated in these clinical trials. You really give us hope for the future because of these yeah. incredible vaccines that now are going to be coming. Secretary Azar, I don't mean to, sec to second guess you so late in the process here, but you say you're working on a messaging campaign. Wouldn't the time for the messaging campaign have been now and prior? So while you're working uh, on logistics, while you're developing, during that no, period, I, I, start educating? I, I, yeah, no, actually, Tony, not. Uh, first off, we wanted to be very sensitive. You know, the other side was complaining if we were to put campaigns out uh, to educate people about the vaccine before the election. There was a lot of concern expressed about that. We held those campaigns back. But also, you want to time it just right. You can't condition a market a month, two months before general vaccine availability. You just won't have the effect. So you want to time it really right in sequence with vaccine availability so that you, that you really have that call to action that will have the maximum effects. So know the timing is right on. All right. We're all hoping it works out. Alex Azar, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.